What's going on everyone? My name is Talmadge with Big Bird Security and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install Arch Linux the easy way. This is the way that I actually install it, even though if you're a new Linux user, I don't recommend this as it doesn't teach you quite as much as the manual installation, which I have a video about linked above. Make sure to check the first comment on that video to fix an error that I made in that video so that your installation works. However, if you install Arch Linux all the time already, and you're just not aware of an easier way to install it and you wanna automate that process a bit more than the slow, tedious manual installation, then this video is for you. In the past, I installed Arch Linux many times over and it was very useful to me to be able to do it very quickly because I would break things and I would wanna reinstall it. So that's what we're gonna cover in today's video. Let's go ahead and jump into our system over here. I'm going to make a new VM for the purposes of this video. We'll just name it BBS for Big Bro Security dash Arch. And as you can see, it auto selects the Arch Linux type. I'll select my ISO, which is the Arch Linux ISO. If you do not know where to get the Arch Linux ISO, go to archlinux.org. Go to download, scroll on down and select a mirror in your country, which for me would be the United States. So I usually like to select a edu domain just because I know that that means that it's from a university and it's probably less likely to have any sort of weird malware or anything like that. Obviously you have the hashes here so you could verify that, but anyways, you would just click here and download that. If you want to flash it to a USB, then you want to do go to rufus.ie and you can download Rufus, which will allow you to select ISO, select your USB and click write. I do not need to do that because I'm using a VM at the moment for the purposes of recording this. So we're just going to use this VM. We're going to go down here to hardware and we'll select some values, 8192 for the RAM and we'll do four CPU cores. I'll enable EFI and then for the hard disk size, I will do 50 gigabytes. Arch Linux is very small as you notice if you download the iso it is super duper tiny only a couple hundred megabytes and the os install equally is as small now we'll do finish and now we're ready to start it up as you can see i already had an arch system over here along with some other oracle linux systems i was using for a lab that i can make a video about if you guys want in the future we'll go ahead and click start now an important thing when installing arch you are going to either need to set up your wi-fi connection once you're booted into the usb or ideally plug into your internet connection via ethernet it just makes this whole process so much easier so if you did have wi-fi you could use the iwctl utility however we do not need that right now because we are connected via ethernet if you run ip addr you can see that we are at the 10.0.2.15 network this is virtualbox's default network what we'll do is run this newer tool called arch install i remember back in the days when arch install wasn't a thing and i found other scripts to do this but arch install is the official way so we'll type arch install and here we go this is the easy way to install arch linux so we'll run through our language is english you can change that if you like go to mirrors you can set mirror region and then go all the way down here and select your country for me that is the united states and then we'll select our locales which should be already defined if based off your country selection which for me they are correctly defined then we'll go to disk configuration you can choose your own disk configuration that's what i usually do if i have anything special going on but otherwise you can click use the best effort partition layout Go ahead and select your main disk with space and click enter. I always use ext4. There's different reasons to use different types of file systems on Linux. I have not researched all of them, but ext4 is what I've used and it's been stable so far. I usually don't like to create a separate partition for slash home. Usually people in Linux seem to do that. I'm not sure why I haven't really researched the logic and the theory behind why you would do that. For me, it was always just annoying if my home partition wasn't big enough and my system was and that kind of thing. So I just didn't do that. You can use disk encryption. So you can set an encryption password. And then you can do this. You need to go and select partitions for which partitions to encrypt. And then we can go back 
Now we have the bootloader. I like to use system MD boot. When I use Arch install, it works just fine. But if you want to use grub, you can select that right there. You can choose to use swap or not. If you have a lot of RAM, you may not feel like you need to use swap, but I would advise to use swap so that in the event you want to put your computer to sleep, that does work. If you don't have swap, putting your computer to sleep is not gonna work. We'll go in here and set our host name. BBS-arch, set a root password. I don't like having my root account disabled. I just, I like to have it there in case I need to use it. We'll add a user and do set our password. And yes, I'm using weak passwords because this is a video and I need to make it quick. Usually I would do much more complex passwords so that it says password strength is very strong. Now, Big World Security, do I want it to be a super user? Yes, because I want to be able to use sudo. We'll confirm and exit. And then the profile is where you can make a lot of decisions. So go into type and you can choose desktop, minimal, server, or xorg. So it installs xorg server. You can install just the server, which is command line. Minimal also is pretty minimal. And then desktop install some of these more desktop related applications. So I just go escape and go back out of this. I don't really use it. Um, you can, if you know you're gonna install a desktop, then why not use that profile? For audio, you can either use PipeWire or Pulse Audio. I'll select PipeWire for this, even though I'm not testing the audio in this video. We have kernels, so you can go in here and you can select which one you want Linux, Linux Hardened, Linux LTS, Long-Term Support, or Linux Zen. Additional packages, you can add your additional packages. So if you're turning it into a desktop install, then you wanna use Chromium. And maybe code, I like NeoVim. And I think that should be good for the very core things. It will verify that they exist. Then we'll go to network configuration and we should click use network manager. That makes it a lot easier to set up things in the future. Go ahead and select your time zone. You can do slash and search. We'll leave NTP set to true and we'll go into optional repositories and enable multi-lib. Then click enter and now we can install. It shows us our full configuration in what looks like a JSON format, but we'll just click enter and the installation should be underway. As you can see right now, it is encrypting our drive with Lux 2, that's what Arch Linux by default uses to encrypt the drive. This is a software-based encryption, not hardware, so there are different types of encryption, and this one, just to be clear, is a software-based encryption. You can buy self-encrypting hardware drives if you so desire, but those are really tricky if you ever wanna swap them between your home systems for any reason. So I would recommend just using software encryption as it isn't really that much of a hit on modern systems at the moment. Right now, it looks like we only have 148 packages to install to get this system up and running. And as you can see, it's doing it pretty quickly. This is a lot faster than Windows installation for sure. And then most other Linux distributions, to be honest, as far as the actual install time. Of course, Arch Linux doing it the manual way, which is what I recommend uh, for beginners and people who need to learn how Linux actually works first. Um, that takes a lot longer. It can take hours, but if you're just installing it and you have it pretty much automated, then it's actually really quick. So now the install is done and we can go ahead and go down to no because we're just gonna reboot into the command line. So we'll click no, clear this out and click reboot. And as you can see, it's starting from Arch Linux from the install that we did. It's going to ask us for our encryption password. Okay, now after several tries, once you've finally remembered your password, it works and the boot up is super duper quick. So now we can go big bro security. Enter in our password. And we are in. This is a fully functional Arch Linux installation. I know it's really bare bones, but in the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to install the desktop environment and configure it to be a custom hacking operating system. Whether you came from the last video I did on Arch Linux or from this video, the next video is going to be what you are going to want to really dive into the weeds and build out a custom desktop environment for you to use on your Arch Linux system. If you like this video and found it helpful, please feel free to leave a like. Comment down below if you have any questions thoughts or any ideas for future videos that you want me to do with Arch Linux or any other cybersecurity topics for that matter. 
I'm Thomas from Big Bro Security, and I'll see you in the next one.